round and round the goalie carousel goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Lockdown Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me here today on another edition of Lockdown Flames. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about one of the many questions surrounding the Flames this season, but really the goaltending situation that has many layers to it. So we're going to start today because we have a little bit of time before things could change, but really at the same time, things could change at the drop of a dime. But uh, make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Flames wherever you're getting your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. So let's rewind to last summer, around August, more so September, I would say. Uh, that's a lie. Heading into the draft heading to the draft last year. Um, everyone kind of expected the Flames to move a goalie in that goaltender being Dan Vladar because he was the less expensive goaltender between him and Jacob Markstrom and obviously does not have the same protection as Jacob Markstrom. And the draft came and went and there was no movement. So, you know, just kind of proceeding through the summer, everyone kind of expected Dan Vladar to be on the move. Uh, and then training camp was in, we were like in the thick of training camp and, you know, the flames came out and said, we're not carrying three goaltenders. It doesn't make sense to carry three goaltenders. And you are absolutely correct that it did not make sense to carry three goaltenders because Dustin Wolf obviously still need needed to develop and needed to play, um, in the AHL. That's not a secret, um, I don't think that it's unreasonable to want your hopefully next franchise goaltender to play consistently, especially when that opportunity is on the table. But there were like many opportunities for the Flames. Like it, it felt like the Flames could have made a trade. Um, with the, uh, Colorado, they needed a goaltender. Uh, Toronto, I believe, was, you know, kind of shopping around for goaltenders. Um, and they were like, it just felt like, okay, like Dan Vladar, you are a Colorado Avalanche. Dan Vladar, you are a Toronto Maple Leaf. Like, there were situations where it just it felt imminent. And it just, it never transpired, transpired. It never came to fruition. And it was, it was odd. And, the trade deadline came and went, and there was no interest in Dan Vladar. And I feel bad for the guy. You know, he he did have a really tough season, and um, that's that's that. You know, there's uh, there's nothing you can do. Like you can't make teams be interested in you, especially if you're not playing well. Um, Dustin Wolf did get called up when Markstrom was a little dinged up. And obviously when Vladar had season ending hip surgery uh, shortly after the trade deadline, I believe. And of course you have Markstrom who was rumored to be out the door as well. He fully expected to be a New Jersey devil um, when they were on that East coast road trip. And that didn't happen clearly, which is why we are here talking about this today. And it's not something that we expected. Like, I think that everyone really thought that, you know, the Flames are going to trade Vladar and make room for Wolf, and Wolf is going to back up for Jacob Markstrom for the next two or three seasons. Um and he's going to learn from a highly competitive goaltender that does not take anything um, less than serious. So that plan has not uh, transpired. If you go back and listen to the uh, free agency 
frenzy from uh, two years ago, maybe three. Um, I talk about how Markstrom is like Wolf was going to come up underneath Markstrom. And now, again, things change, but that kind of felt like that was the blueprint. And now we're kind of just at the drawing board again. Because where, which goaltender are you moving? Are you moving the goaltender that has that no movement clause that you strained your relationship with because you didn't want to retain money and talked about not wanting it to be in the headlines and not wanting it to be like a point of conversation? And what was the point of the conversation? Um, Every intermission report, Jacob Markstrom. So, obviously, I think that that trust is broken. I don't think that that's something that you can just kind of rebuild, if you will. Um, Or you are trading a guy that doesn't really... He's not going to get you much in return. He's probably going to get you, like, a seventh-round pick. Let's be entirely honest here, okay? But there's no real like easy path to this. And we're going to talk about that next because do you want Dustin Wolf coming up behind someone who was incredibly competitive, who was just nominated for the uh, Vesna two years ago, who has a consistent proven track record of being your number one goaltender or the guy that's really struggled since he was brought in um, to the organization a few years ago. Like, where where do you see this fitting and what road <laughs> are we going down? But coming up next, uh, we're going to talk about all that and uh, we're going to be right back after a quick break. And I want to talk to you about one of the sponsors of today's episode, and that would be Indeed. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills. Indeed's hire uh, powerful hiring platform that you can help Uh, It can help you do it all. Uh, They streamline hiring with powerful tools that find you matched candidates. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Thank you everyone for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. I hope you all are enjoying your summer so far and uh, make sure you're subscribed wherever you're getting your podcasts as well as on YouTube. I'm here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. How do you navigate this, right? Thankfully, none of us have to make these decisions. None of us have to make these decisions, but it's fun to look at these scenarios and what might happen, right? So let's say they trade Jacob Markstrom. Jacob Markstrom, you are now a New Jersey devil or whatever team you choose to waive your no movement clause for this summer. Okay, sure, great. Now you are running on a tandem that is inexperienced. Dan Vladar has been in the NHL for a couple years. He has not seen consistent playing time. He has not had uh, really overall success, and that's the guy you want leading your team. He's also going to be coming back from hip surgery, and hip surgery is hard enough, right? Like, we've seen players come back from it. Um, You know, uh, Brad Marchand's had it, uh, David Krejci, 
Patrick Kane. Like there have been a ton of players that come back from hip surgery and just aren't right immediately after. However, Atuka Rask had hip surgery and then ended up retiring the next season. So like, let's, let's be honest. Um, it's complicated. Goaltenders, I mean, every position needs their hips, but goalies really need their hips too. It's a big part of the job and you aren't going to come back and immediately be better. That's, it doesn't matter what type of injury it is. You need to, just because you are cleared for hockey does not mean you are a hundred percent healed. Talk about that a lot when it comes to players coming back from surgery or that will be going into surgery or, you know, whatever the case may be explaining why a player might have a down year or a down start to the year after having shoulder surgery, having wrist surgery. Uh, it's not easy and it's not like you can just like wake up one day and be like, that's it. I'm so much better. It comes with a lot of physical therapy. It comes with a lot of pain. You have to do a lot of healing. And that, again, does not happen overnight. Maybe could it potentially be better, quote unquote, better um, since Vladar had surgery in March? Maybe that that's a possibility because who knows how long this had been bothering him for and was he able to, you know, kind of take it easy and not have to worry about, um, you know, overextending himself too much. But then again, at the same time, like you have to use your legs, <laughs> your hips to move throughout your daily life. Like you can't, he's not just scooting around. Um, I think about Sean Monahan and the few seasons ago where he could not walk. He could not walk because of his hip, because of his leg. He could not walk the quarter mile from the Flames facility to breakfast. 26 years old, dragging his leg with him. And you, it, what? Like, you're not, that's just, <laughs> the more damage you do to it, obviously, the harder it is to come back from. Sean Monaghan has been great since he has fully healed from his surgeries um, and hasn't really suffered anything since leaving Calgary. And that could be a whole other conversation regarding things that are just well above my level of expertise. But I digress. Um, he just had a really bad season. Like, let's let's not sugarcoat it, okay? Uh, 882 save percentage over 20 games. Um, this is, He's heading into his final year of his contract as well. So obviously, are they going to be shopping him? Are they going to be, you know, is this a player that they could maybe extend a season or two? Like there's, why, like, why would you want to run with Dan Vladar? This team is not going to be competitive, but you're going to need a strong mentor for Dustin Wolf to learn from and someone that can stop pucks because your defense is not doing you any favors. Your defense plays like the three blind mice out there. Minus Mackenzie Weger. Rasmus Anderson found himself out of position a lot this past uh past season. Just looking out there like a lost puppy dog, which I talked about in his um review episode that I did two weeks ago, I think. Uh, you can definitely check that out. But it's not, like, th this isn't an easy answer because there's so much that, like, logistically goes into it that it's just kind of like, well, you could you could do something not good or you could do something okay or, like, not as bad. Like, there's, uh, it's hard because obviously Markstrom is the more expensive goaltender. So you trade him, you retain a little bit over the next two, two seasons. And um, you, you take whatever the team gives you, right? You trade Vladar, you are more than likely not going to be retaining anything. I think he's on like a $2.1 million contract um, just through the end of this season. So it's not going to be anything that's like, backbreaking and I think that if you 
are trading Vladar. Um, <laughs> like, if a team wants you to retain a little bit, you're going to retain a little bit. You will do whatever they're asking, right? Uh, but this team, it, like, it, I don't want to say it doesn't matter who you have in net because at the end of the day, it does. Um, we talk about it a lot. Uh, here, uh, especially when Nick's on the show, uh, how the goaltender is like your most important penalty killer. And if you're watching the playoffs right now, you see that um, with Jay Gottinger. You have seen that with Jay Gottinger yourself if you watched the playoffs two years ago and you're like, oh crap, that man could stop anything that comes his way. And then you have Igor uh, Shosturkin in New York who is facing, like, 100 shot attempts per night and is, like, give him a knife. Give him a knife. Now, no matter who is in net for the Flames, that they, they are not playing behind a good defense, okay? They are not playing behind a good defense, and that's not good. You can kind of, when you have good defense, your goaltender can, like, like, there's more security there. But when your defense, if this defense is anything like last season, like post-trade deadline, the Flames are going to win 20 games. 25 max. Like, that is deplorable. Like, there aren't words for it to describe how horrendous it was and how just unacceptable it was to watch every night. And, like... Dan Vladar is already a shaky goaltender. Okay. So you're putting him in like a more high risk situation where like you're setting him up for failure. You're setting Dustin Wolf up for failure. Granted, Dustin Wolf is a better goaltender than Dan Vladar. Uh, higher ceiling, but like inexperienced. You just aren't going to expect them to play at the caliber that Markstrom probably can keep you at. And coming up next, we are going to talk about what if they don't trade Markstrom and they run it back with two goaltenders because why on earth would you make a change if you can avoid it? But first, we are going to take a quick break here and I'm going to talk to you about the app that I love using and has made watching the playoffs a lot more fun, especially since the Flames aren't in it, but also since my Bruins got eliminated. It's winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a win, a big win, of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Um, you know, I personally like betting on uh, you know shot attempts, uh, the money line over under like it gives you something fun to watch for even like you can be a different type of emotionally <laughs> invested in a game because it's not your team uh visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count fanduel america's number one sports book Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Lockdown Flames. Make sure you are following me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. Okay, so, you know, we, we've gone over the scenario of the Flames trading Markstrom. Okay, now now what happens if you, if you don't? And I'm sure that you're not going to run it back with three goaltenders. You took that off the table last year. So why would it be on the table now? I think that, you know, is Dustin Wolf will not start the season in the NHL, which I think is doing more harm than good. And this is something I am incredibly worried about when it comes to Dustin Wolf's development and his leap to the NHL, because I, I never expect a player to have a smooth transition, but the expectations on Wolf are so much higher than they would be for a player coming, like a goaltender coming up through 
you know, like the San Jose system or the uh, the Chicago system, things like that. Like there, there's a different sort of expectation, even though the Flames really aren't in a competitive spot. It's a lot different than people expected two, three years ago. So what do you do? What do you do? You start him, you start Wolf in the, uh, in the AHL. Okay. Just let him get some reps in, I guess. Um, or are you starting the season with Dan Vladar on IR and letting Wolf get some October reps in? Are you just going to do that? Like, are you like, what is your, what is your plan? Because it depends on how it like if Ladar is even like able to go on IR if he is still recovering to the point where he needs to be on IR but again teams aren't just going to be calling for Ladar and being like you know say November 1st or by American Thanksgiving towards the end of October or end of November rather saying hey Dan Vladar I know he had a really tough go of it last season and he's only played like six games so far this season um you know what what can I give you for him I don't see that happening I could be very wrong but this there was no interest in him at the trade deadline and there's going to be goalies on the free agent market this summer. Why would teams give up assets for a rental? You know, a rental that doesn't have a proven track record. A rental that, okay, so he's a backup goaltender. I mean, I guess if you like truly, truly need one, sure. But I just, I don't see that, ha- it, I don't see it happening that way. I also, (laughs) the the Flames would not buy out Dan Vladar's contract. It would make no sense to. And if you put him on waivers, someone's going to pick him up. More than likely, someone's going to pick him up. And that solves your problem. But then you're not getting anything in return. And how... How are you integrating Dustin Wolf? And I feel like this is going to be a major point of contention when it comes to um, re-signing Dustin Wolf this summer. He's obviously an RFA, so you don't have to entirely worry about um, you know him hitting the free market or whatever the free agent market. But there's still like, what do we do? Sort of situation. How can we prove that this is? going to be a long-term plan and that we have thought it out and that really should be a really big point of concern and priority for the flames they need to figure out a way to integrate Dustin Wolf are you gonna let Vladar start the season and let hopefully have him pad some stats before you trade him is that what you're gonna do are, are you gonna hopefully you know, trade him by January and you have Wolf come up and just kind of back up the rest of the season? Are you still going to be taking calls during the season for Jacob Markstrom? Like, what is the... What is the plan? What is the goal? I don't see, like, either path. Like... Trading Jacob Markstrom or not trading Jacob Markstrom. Like, neither of these are ideal for the goaltending situation. Because, again, you're setting Dustin Wolf up to play behind a defense that resembles Swiss cheese and a veteran goaltender who is shaky and just has no proven track record. Or... You're hoping someone calls for Vladar in the middle of the season or whatever and integrating him that way behind a disgruntled goalie. Like, what 
wh where are we going? I think the most likely outcome is the Flames trade Jacob Markstrom and you start uh, with a new tandem and your team is gonna, not going to be good. Your team is not going to be, it's, it's not going to be a wait until game 82 to make the playoffs. You will be very similar to how this year went in terms of losing 13 out of 15 of your final games. And I, I hate saying that because I want this team to be good. You need a good hockey team in order to put butts in the seat to get your new arena, right? Like we, we all want this team to be good. But now you're, ta you're taking your lumps. You're starting to take the lumps that come with becoming a competitive team. Watching Sam Bennett in the playoffs is driving me bananas. Because he is the Flames' highest overall draft pick in franchise history at number four. Didn't work out for him here. Just didn't, was not... No, was no longer working out for him. Matthew Kachuk didn't want to stay. That really stings, and it stinks. You have players requesting trades. You have a less attractive, you know, location for free agents than you did when, you know, you signed Blake Coleman, you signed Nazem Kadri, you brought in these free agents that you really felt like, okay, we're going to get maybe not as strong as a run of the 21-22 season, but you're going to get something. You're going to get something. And you just, you got nothing. And it stinks. I do not enjoy this. I do not enjoy watching them lose. I do not enjoy, you know, coming on and having to like talk about the negative stuff. It's not fun for anyone. But I think it's a good reminder that with this, there will come light at the end of the tunnel and it might not be a first overall draft pick. I, I do not see this team being bad enough for that, but I do see them continuing to pick within the top 10, top five over the next few years, because that's just how it's, how things look right now. I don't know. You're going to have to acquire players by trade. You're going to have to hope that your prospects really pop off and you just, you need to figure out this goaltending situation. You have to figure it out because it is no longer the easy option of, we'll just trade Vladar and have Wolf come in. Nope. That's not, it's not like that anymore. So, Big old complicated mess, but we're going to be here to talk about it all through the summer. Uh, we have you covered for the draft, for free agency, any trades that happen. It's just any news, you know, 32 Thoughts comes out three three times a week. And um, it, there's usually something involving Calgary within those 32 Thoughts. So you can want to stick around. Because I'm sure Elliot Friedman will eventually be feeding us some good information. Uh, make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. You can follow the show um, on Instagram at Locked on Flames. And I will see you next time. Have a good day.